All right, we're looking to approximate the area of the region bounded by the given curve, the x-axis, and on the interval from x equals negative 2 to x equals 1. We're going to use five rectangles, and we're going to use a right-hand sum approach to get started. No matter what approach we're using, we begin by finding the base length for all of our rectangles. To find that base length, take where the interval ends, subtract where the interval begins, Divide that by the number of rectangles. That calculation comes out to be 3 fifths. In a moment here, as we calculate further, we can use 0.6 as our decimal. Our area is going to be equal to the base length we found. So now I'm going to insert in 0.6. Multiplied to the sum of a bunch of heights for all of our rectangles. So since there's five rectangles, the heights are found by taking values and plugging into the function. We're going to have five function values that we'll be adding up. Now how I find the values that I'm plugging in for the functions is I start up here at the right end of my interval, which would be at 1. I plug that in to the function. I then subtract away the base length of 0.6. In this case, I get 0.4. That's the next value I'm going to plug in for the second function notation. I subtract 0.6 away again. So 0.4 minus 0.6 gives me negative 0.2. That gets plugged into the third slot. Subtract 0.6 again, get negative 0.8. Plug that into the fourth function notation. Subtract 0.6 one more time. Get negative 1.4. That goes in the last position. Now what we need to do is we need to go through and calculate the values for each of these function notations, add those all up, and multiply by our base out here. That will give us the approximate area. To do that, we can use the assistance of the calculator. So on the calculator, I'm going to go to my table setup, which is second window. I'm going to make sure that the independent variable here is on ask. And then I'm going to go to y equals, clear out anything I have there for y equals, insert my function, which is x plus 6 over x plus 3. Now I'm going to go to my table, that second graph. I have values in there for x currently, that's fine. I'm just going to enter in over those values. And the values I'm going to enter in, I'm going to start with this one here that I'm plugging in the function. One, enter. In the y column, it gives me 1.75. So now I know the value of this function when x is 1 is 1.75. I can use that in my calculation. I'll continue further here by plugging in for the next value. The next value was 0.4. After that, we had negative 0.2, followed by negative 0.8. And then finally, we had negative 1.4. So all the values that I see right here, these are the values that I want to record. I want to add those up and then multiply by 0.6. Now the resulting answer that I got when I did that calculation, and this is rounding to three decimal places, my approximate area was 6.565. Alright, now let's look at left-hand approach, the left-hand sum approach. And this time we'll use eight rectangles. We're using eight rectangles. Start the same way as we did for the right-hand sum approach. Take where your interval ends, subtract where your interval begins, divide by the number of rectangles. So this time we're dividing by eight. We get three-eighths. 
We can use that decimal approximation here in a moment as we do our calculation to approximate the area. So finding the approximate area, we take our base, which is 0.375, if I divide 3 and 8. We multiply that to the sum of all the heights of our rectangles. So this time we're dealing with eight rectangles. That means I'm going to have eight function notations that I'm adding up inside the brackets here. So I've set up my eight function notations, and now since this is a left-hand sum approach, I'm going to start at the left-hand side of my interval, which is at negative 2. Take negative 2, plug in, and now to figure out what I'm plugging into this next function notation here, I'm going to take negative 2, I'm going to add on my base length, that value will go in here. Once I get that value, I will add on 0.375 again, that number will go in this position. Add on 0.375 again, that number will go in this position. And I repeat that pattern until I get down to this last function notation. So now that I have all my values that I want to plug in, I'm going to go back to my calculator like I did before. I'm going to go to the table, and in the X column, I'm going to start by entering negative 2, then negative 1.625, then negative 1.25, make note of the y values I'm getting back in that respective column. I'll add up all those results for the y's that I'm getting back and then multiply by 0.375. That will give me my approximate area using a left-hand sum. Okay. 